So far we talk about message authentication code. So now it is time to move on to authenticated encryption. So until this part, we haven't talked about encryption because all this time we were generating tags which were used for the uh, message authentication. But now idea is to combine both encryption and message authentication. And at the end, we will call it authenticated encryption. So let's look at the motivation and how it is done. Message authentication code is computed as a result of a complete pass over the data. If we provide both encryption and authentication in this way, then we may require two passes over the data. So assume that you are using a MAC and an encryption algorithm like AES. So you encrypt the data first, and then maybe you generate the tag from the data again. So this will require two passes. So we can combine these two operations to provide authenticated encryption, and uh, later we will. Uh, see authenticated encryption algorithms where this can be done on a single pass and so on. But the big picture can be shown like this. So an authenticated encryption algorithm is picture is given as well. So let's uh, recall what the uh, symmetric encryption algorithms look like. Remember that for a log cipher or stream cipher, we have the plain text as an input and the key and we generate a cipher text. Now we are we have some more parameters here, like nodes, associated data, and tag. So in an authenticated encryption algorithm, the inputs are nodes, plain text, associated data, key. And as an output, we produce the cipher text, and also we produce a tag. So associated data, which I'm going to define probably in the next slide, but uh, this is uh, different than plain text, because uh, plain text is the data that we are going to encrypt. So at the end, you will have it in an encrypted way. But sometimes we use some data, which is not secret, so we don't need to encrypt it. So this is called associated data, but uh, it should also be used in the generation of the tag so that we can authenticate it. So this is a data which will be authenticated, but not encrypted. OK, so. Let's give a better definition now. Authentic authenticated encryption with associated data, in short, AEAD. We may need some information like headers to be authenticated but not encrypted. Thus, the authenticated information can be processed before the decryption of the entire message. Such schemes are called authenticated encryption with associated data, AEAD. We may prefer these two operations to be performed in parallel. We may prefer these operations to be online. Namely, we can start, start performing the encryption and authentication operations as soon as some part of the message is available. So without the knowledge of the entire message or its length. So let's look at some of the examples in the literature where actually two passes are performed. So let's look at the CCM mode, counter with cipher block chaining message authentication code. So this is two pass block cipher mode. It is IEEE standard for uh, wireless LANs, 802.11. It also appears in this special publication, SP800-38C. And in this uh, mode, tag is concatenated to the end of the cipher text. So let's look at the picture. So you have your message, and you have a block cipher. And in all of these pictures, you may assume that it is a yes. So you perform an encryption operation, but instead of uh, generating a cipher text, you repeat this operation in a cipher block chaining mode and produce the tag. Now, uh, you're uh, encrypting some kind of counters and then exit it with the plain text and produce ciphertext here. So this is what uh, a CCM mode looks like. So you have you produce the ciphertext here, tag here. So this is why it is two pass because you are using the whole message twice here. And Galo counter mode is somewhat diff somewhat similar. Uh, in this case, you perform the uh, encryption of counters and then XOR with the plain text to produce ciphertext blocks. If you have authenticated data, authenticate associated data, sorry, you used it here. This multiplication is just a color field operation, a simple operation. And at the end, you produce the tag here. So your ciphertext blocks are here. Your authentication tag is here. So you have an 
single extra uh, encryption operation to produce the tag. So instead of so the previous pictures use the block cipher to produce both the cipher text and the tag, and uh, it actually simplest thing that comes into mind can't we just use a hash function and block cipher together and obtain the authenticated encryption? So when the MAC is obtained via hash function, the following methods are widely used: MAC and encrypt, MAC then encrypt, and encrypt and MAC. So Let's first look at the first picture, make an encrypt. So you have the plain text here. You use it uh, for the encryption here and produce the cipher text. And here in the picture, it says hash function, but actually you are using a hash function like in a HMAC mode or something because you need the key also here and produce the tag here. So this is a uh, MAC and encrypt and it is adopted by SSH protocol. So recall the previous pictures. What we did was to use the plain text information uh, twice in the block cipher encryption, but this time we have both an encryption algorithm and the hash function. So uh, the previous pictures might be chosen because if you are performing it in a hardware, now in this picture you have to uh, implement both encryption and the hash function, but in the previous pictures, you only you need to implement as a block cipher. Let's move on to the second one, MAC then encrypt. In this case, you first produce the tag, concatenate it to the plain text, again use the secret key to produce encryption and obtain a cipher text. So this is why it is first MAC and then encrypt. So this is used by uh, TLS 1.2 and uh, this was before TLS 1.3 and when I was uh, preparing these slides I always claimed that TLS 1.3 will be supporting EAD but I was expecting that they are they were going to choose uh, one of the winners of the Caesars competition but instead in TLS 1.3 we have uh, Chacha algorithm, which we will be seeing in a few minutes. And finally, encrypt and MAC. Uh, this is somewhat superior to the previous ones because in this case, first you encrypt the data and obtain the ciphertext. And from the ciphertext, you use your message authentication code. So you're using, for instance, key with, uh, I don't know, HMAC algorithm, SHA-256 and produce the tag. So you concatenate it to the end of the ciphertext. This is more secure against uh, both privacy and integrity attacks. This is because you are using the plain text information only once. Uh, I mean, we don't say that the previous two methods can be broken, but in history, we always seen that using the plain text information twice in different algorithms always leaks information. So this is why it is a good idea to use this information only once here and use the cipher text uh, to produce the mess, uh, tag here. And another uh, good property of this operation is that make can be verified before the dec before decrypting the whole cipher text. So you, uh, as a receiver, you receive the cipher text and the tag. Instead of decrypting the whole message, you can take the cipher text, put it into your message authentication code and check if the tags match. If they don't, then you don't need to decrypt the whole message. So it saves you a lot of time and actually uh, computational power. So let's look at TLS 1.3. Uh, as I told before, AAD, it now supports AAD and a charge at event with poly uh, 1305 uh, as the uh, authenticated encryption algorithm. And let's see why is the uh, reason behind it. So you can use TLS 1.3 supports AES. So you can use AES in, uh, anywhere you want, but it also supports the Chacha stream cipher. So, uh, I mean, this is not an official uh, explanation, but this is why we see it is necessary. We always because support using of AES because Intel processors since Westmere architecture in 2010 come with AES hardware instructions, which is shortened as AES NI, new instruction set. 
which make AES encryptions effectively free because uh, since you're performing hardware level encryption, it's really fast and you almost receive it as a, in a free way. But phones and tablets don't support AES and I because um, almost every ARM processor doesn't support it. But as far as I recently learned, new uh, ARM processors uh, are going to come with AES and I instruction sets. And uh, previously in TLS, we have RC4 as a stream cipher, but it was broken, so it was removed in the, and it was, we weren't uh, using it anymore. And Google replaced it with Chacha 20 in Chrome around 2013. So this is, uh, and uh, after the TLS 1.3 also, you uh, accept the Chacha as one of the uh, encryption algorithms. So in TLS 1.3, you can use AES or Chacha 20, depending on your choice. So it's, this is a better friend alternative to AES GCM. The idea is again as follows. If you are using AES GCM, and if you're using an Intel or AMD processor on your laptop or your desktop PC, you do it in a very fast way. So it is almost free. But uh, as I said before, some devices like mobile phones and tablets don't have AES and an instruction set and Chacha can be a better friendly alternative to AES GCM. So this is why it is a good thing that we have two encryption algorithms in TLS 1.3, namely AES and Chacha. So Ch Chacha, uh, uh, let's give a brief summary of this algorithm. Uh, actually, it was a Salsa 20 initially designed by uh, Bernstein in 2005, and it was submitted to East Stream Competition. In 2008, a modified version is named Chacha, and Google selected Chacha 20, uh, so this is a stream cipher, and uh, together with Poly uh, 1305, uh, uh, when you combine both of them, you obtain authenticated encryption. And they, Google replaced it, uh, replaced RC4 with Chacha in their TLS communication. And afterwards, it became adopted with uh, many organizations and uh, software. So OpenSSH also adopted these two algorithms. And it is used in random number generators in many operating systems. Linux kernel, kernel also uses Chacha event to generate data for uh, non-blocking your random device. IETF published a reference implementation for modified Chacha Tivanta. I said modified because I think the way they use the nonce is somewhat different in, from the other versions. And use of Chacha in IKE and, and IPsec have been proposed for standardization in RFC 7634. And uh, also it is used in TLS, uh, sorry, it's used in TLS have been proposed for standardization in RFC 79 and 5. <clears throat> it is also used by the WireGuard VPN protocol. So actually after I prepared this slides, probably this list is now uh, a lot longer. So uh, people are adopting this algorithm uh, to be used in authenticated encryption. So let's look at uh, briefly at this algorithm and see how it works. So uh, this is a stream cipher, so it has an initial state. <coughs> Sorry, it has an internal state, and uh, initially you uh, fill it like this. You put the constants here, you put your key here, and position and nonce values here. So initial state is represented as 16 32-bit words, so it's a 4 by 4 matrix, and all of the boxes are 32-bit words, so 4 bytes. And you perform operations on uh, four values at a time. So at all runs, you perform operations on the columns. So you take these four values and operate on them, operate on this column and so on. And at even runs, you perform operations on the rows. And we say Chacha 20 because this means that the number of runs is 20. So what operations are performed is shown in the uh, next slide. So at the first run, uh, if you start from counting from uh, one, let's say, since it is odd, you have to work on columns. So you take this column. So this is four 32-bit words, and you put uh, them here. 
and perform this operation. So this is a single run that is applied to these four values, but you have to do it 20 times. So replace this picture 20 times to the bottom. And uh, this will actually modify this column. But since you have three more columns, you perform this operation four times in parallel. This is why we call it a quarter round function. So you also have to uh, copy this picture four times. And the picture is really simple. As you can see, the operations are XOR modular addition. Since these are 32 bit values, this is an addition in modulo uh, 2 to the 32. And the operations are uh, left rotations, like 16 bits here, 12 bit here, 8 and 7 bits here. So it is really simple. And uh, this actually uh, modifies the internal state. And then at the end, you produce the key stream and XOR them with your block. And uh, the poly uh, 13 5 algorithm is given in pseudocode here. We don't need to go into details here, but I'm just giving it as a uh, reference. So combined with this, you produce the tag from here, and uh, uh, this turns this cha-cha to a uh, authenticated encryption algorithm. So, uh, so far we have seen the standards. Uh, but as you can see, uh, they are using two different algorithms most of the time. So uh, Nis said that maybe we need a, a lightweight standard uh, for this. And for this reason, in 2015, they performed the first lightweight cryptography workshop. And afterwards, uh, after the second workshop, they published the internal report. Uh, where they announced actually a competition-like standardization process. In this document, the submission requirements and evaluation criteria were determined, and the submission deadline was uh, February 2019. So 57 algorithms were submitted, and 56 of them uh, announced as the first-round candidates. And after some cryptanalysis effort from the cryptography community, they announced the second-round candidates in uh, 13th of August 2019. I think there were, uh, if I'm not mistaken, 32 algorithms in this round. So recently, uh, the fourth workshop was held, but this time virtually due to pandemic. And uh, due to the pandemic, actually, this timetable is somewhat changed. But if uh, no further changes happen, uh, we are expecting needs to announce the third round candidates before the end of this year. So most probably in December. And at the end, one or more winners will be announced. NIST hasn't decided yet. But uh, of course, crypto community wants more than one winner so that the competing people has more chance to win. But uh, industry wants a single winner because if there are more than one standard, then they have to put all of them into their devices, which will be contradict the idea of lightweight design. So we will see what will happen at the end, but this competition will be going like two or three years at least, and the winner will be announced then. At that time, at the end, we will have a lightweight cryptography standard for authenticated encryption algorithm. 